we've had a great moment in the presence of the Lord. I bless the Lord for his faithfulness. Uh, and then we're going to wait for those who are online to join us. How is everybody so far? Amen. Uh, did you enjoy your Thanksgiving? Amen. I enjoyed the Thanksgiving. Uh, we might have gained a few pounds. <laughs> yeah, sometimes uh, during Thanksgiving, yes. people tend to overeat. Uh, amen. We bless the Lord for his faithfulness. Are you all set? For those who are joining us online, amen. We thank God for his faithfulness. Amen. Uh, I want us to go to the word of God from the book of Habakkuk. <laughs> from the book of Habakkuk. I can see some of the eyes I got when I said Habakkuk. <laughs> uh, I can't tell you the page number, but Habakkuk is after Nahum and before Zephaniah. I have lost you the more. <laughs> but I'm going to give you time to, to get there. Amen. Habakkuk. Oh yeah, you got it. Yeah, you can go to the to to the what do you call it? The index at the beginning of your Bibles, yeah, and just try to figure out where Habakkuk is. Go to the page. Okay, chapter. Amen. Are we there, yeah. Habakkuk? Chapter. Uh, for those who need pens, we still have more pens on my desk over there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, please distribute pens for those who forgot their pens because we still continue having to write notes. Amen. I'm still waiting for you to get to Habakkuk. Yeah. Uh, amen. If you get there, say amen. amen. Habakkuk. Uh, Habakkuk chapter 3. Habakkuk chapter 3. And I want you to go with me verse by verse because we are going to read the whole chapter. Mm-hmm. I'm going to read. Amen. Waiting for everybody to settle down. Um, yeah, we need more pens. I think we still have more pens for this. It's good to write. I said it's important to write in your notebook because sometimes you have to speak and even tell the enemy, it is written in my Bible, it is written in my heart, and it is also written in my notebook. Amen. And when you write, it's most likely you won't forget. Amen. I think we are all set on. Amen. Amen. Let's pray before we read the word of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless you and we honor you this moment. We thank you for such a sweet moment in your presence. And we thank you for honoring us with your presence today. As we learn from your word, we shall render ourselves to you. We prepare our hearts and declare their furrowed ground, their there's there are soil that is fertile to receive the word O oh god and to bear fruit in the name of jesus we thank you for the revelation of your holy spirit as i speak this word O oh god and we declare that this word is going to move us to another level O oh god this word is going to transform us in the name of jesus we thank you lord as you speak to us today and we declare that this word shall not be taken away but it shall bear fruit in each and every hearer, oh God. We thank you even for those who are joining us online. As they also partake this word, I declare a transformation in the lives of many. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and we give thanks. And everybody say amen. 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 Are we together in Habakkuk chapter 3? Yeah. The title of my message today is Habakkuk Powerful Prayer. Habakkuk Powerful Prayer. Verse 1 starts by saying, a prayer of Habakkuk, the prophet, upon Shignoth. O Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. O Lord, revive thy works in the midst of the ears. In the midst of the ears, make known. In wrath, remember mercy. Verse 3 says, God came from Teman and the Holy One from Mount Paran. Salah, his glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of his praise. And his brightness was as the light. He had horns coming out of his hand, and there was the hiding of his power. 
before him went the pestilence and the burning coals went forth at his feet. I'm, I'm, I'm believing that for those who have creative imagination, you're trying to imagine this scenario. Amen. His brightness was as the light. He had horns coming out of his hand and there was, there was the hiding of his power. Before him went the pestilence and burning coals went forth at his feet. He stood and measured the earth. He beheld and drove asunder the nations, and the everlasting mountains were scattered. The perpetual hills did bow. His ways are everlasting. I want you to mark that. His ways are everlasting. I saw the tents of Cushan in affliction, and the curtains of the land of Midian did tremble. Verse 8, was the Lord displeased against the rivers? Was your anger against the livers? Was thy wrath against the sea? That thou ride upon the horses and thy chariots of salvation. Thy bow was made quite naked according to the oaths of the tribe. Even thy words, Salah, thou did cleave the earth with rivers. The mountains saw you and they trembled. Amen. Are you still imagining? The mountains saw you and they trembled. The overflowing of the waters passed by. The deep uttered his voice and lifted up his hands on hand. The sun and the moon stood still in their habitation. At the light of your arrows they went. At the shining of thy glittering spear. Amen. Amen. Are you still imagining whatever we are reading? Thou did march through the land in indignation. You did thresh the heathen in anger. You went forth for the salvation of thy people, even for the salvation with your anointed. You wounded the head out of the house of the wicked by discovering the foundation unto the neck. You did strike through with his tails the head of his villages. They came out as a wheel wheel to scatter me. Their rejoicing was as to devour the poor secretly. Verse 15. Thou did, didst walk through the sea with your horses through the heap of great waters. When I heard, my belly trembled. My lips quivered at the voice. Rottenness entered unto my bones and I trembled in myself that I might rest in the day of trouble when he cometh up unto the people. He will invade them with the troops, with his troops. Verse 17 says, Although the fig trees shall not blossom, neither shall the fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail, and the fields shall yield no meat, the flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no heart in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. I want you to mark, underline that verse, verse 18. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Verse 19 says, The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like his feet. And he will make me to walk upon my high places. I want you to underline my high places. My high places. To the chief singer on my stringed instrument. Praise the name of the Lord. That is a powerful prayer. Uh, that was prayed by Habakkuk. Habakkuk is one of the minor prophets. And they, uh, let me just say this, he's not minor because he didn't have greater anointing or greater calling like, uh, like Jeremiah or Ezekiel. But Habakkuk, Nahum, Zephaniah, and Haggai and all the other minor prophets are called minor prophets because of the, the volume of their books. They had short books, yeah? Like Habakkuk, we have read it's uh, chapter 1 up to chapter 3. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And today I want us to just think about this prayer that was prayed by a prophet. A man who could just have a burden from the Lord and prophesy to the people of Israel. You know, a prophet is somebody who has communion with God. 
and hears from God to bring to men the word of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. But we find him asking questions. And today I want us to think about the questions we have in life. Life is full of questions. The Lord gave me this word because I had questions this week. There was something I was wrestling with the Lord about. And I had questions. And the Lord directed me to this prayer of Habakkuk. To somebody who had questions like I had questions. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And you know, some questions are unimportant. Some of the questions we ask are not really important. But life is full of questions. Some questions have life-changing, life-uttering implications. There are some questions you ask, and when you find the answers, there are changes that take place in your life. Praise the name of the Lord. And there are those questions that sound not important, but definitely have life-changing implications. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Like if somebody asks you, do I look fat in this dress? <laughs> uh, uh? It's gonna change. <laughs> it sounds innocent enough, but definitely have some life altering implications and consequences. Especially if it's your wife asking you, Do I look fat in this dress? The way you answer that. May bring implications in life. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And so, when we talk about questions, as I was having questions this week, I know I'm not the only one who has been having questions. Because some questions come at this time of the year. When you look back and reflect at the new year resolutions, it's just the other day we were saying Happy New Year. 2018 is here. How many had a list of resolutions, things to do and things not to do? Praise the name of the Lord. And how many can tick off all of the resolution and say, Oh yes, 2018 has been a good year. Whatever I set out to do, I have done it. Unfortunately, very few can come to that conclusion. Praise the name of the Lord. And so there are times when we are faced with questions. You may ask, didn't I have enough faith? Didn't I have enough discipline? Where did I go wrong? Others may be asking, am I going to make it within the remaining month, the remaining days? Am I going to cover everything that I had purposed that I'm going to cover in 2018? Praise the name of the Lord. Some questions may be because of unanswered prayers. Amen. You know, there's a, there's a, there's a, a, a joke that is passing, going around on WhatsApp. A joke that is saying, my pastor will tell me what it meant when he told me that 2018 is my year. <laughs> huh? A joke that is being passed forwarded on WhatsApp. My pastor will tell me what it meant when he told me that 2018 was my year. Because somebody looks and says, what did it mean really that 2018 will be my year? Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. There is prophetic word, the word that the Lord gave us at the beginning of the year. And there are so many questions that may be going around in your mind. I want to tell you you're not the first Habakkuk had questions, and I want to explain to you some of the questions that Habakkuk had. I want to give you a scenario, a background on when Habakkuk was living. Habakkuk was living in the era when King Nebuchadnezzar had defeated Egypt and was about to attack Judah. And this is something that had been prophesied by Jeremiah. Jeremiah the prophet had said that even Judah will be attacked and they will be taken into captivity. And so Habakkuk questions were coming from this root of asking himself, why is God allowing a wicked nation? Because the Babylonians were wicked. Why is God allowing a wicked nation like Babylon to capture or to conquer God's people? 
That is one of the things that provoked Habakkuk. One of the questions that made him wonder, why? Why such a great God and merciful God? Holy God? Why allow people who are ungodly? Why allow the weaker nation to capture the people of God? And Habakkuk also knew that the nation of Judah was in a state of corruption. It was being led by weakened leaders. He also understood that. And then this is one of the questions he had was like, with God and all his ability, why can't he change the weakened rulers? Why can't he change the hearts of the people? Yet he is able to do that. Praise the name of the Lord. So he was in the midst of having those questions. And he also knew that God could not ignore the sins of these leaders. Because judgment had already been released. So we find Habakkuk in the middle there wondering, why is God allowing the wicked people to conquer this nation? And at the same time wondering, why isn't God with his awesome power and great power not changing the wicked rulers that are ruling us right now? And then wondering why is God f full of mercy but not ignoring or just letting go and forgiving our sins and just letting us uh, be a nation. So that is where Habakkuk was. That is in the state that Habakkuk was. Praise the name of the Lord. And Habakkuk, the name Habakkuk means to embrace and it also means to wrestle. The name Habakkuk means to embrace, but it also means to wrestle. Praise the name of the Lord. And so in this short book of Habakkuk, if you get time this week, I urge you to go and read the book of Habakkuk from chapter 1. And I have read for you chapter 3. Amen. So you just have chapter 1 and chapter 2 to read. And then you count yourself. You have read the book of Habakkuk. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. So... In this short book of Habakkuk, he is wrestling with God concerning the problem of how a holy God can allow so much evil to befall his people. He is wrestling with that aspect. And at the same time, he is embracing the greatness of God and the faithfulness of God in the midst of everything else. Praise the name of the Lord. And I'm sure just like I we began and I say, there are people who are wrestling with the circumstances. You look around at the things that are happening around your life and you feel like you're wrestling with why is this happening? Praise the name of the Lord. You are wrestling with the why this is happening. And at the same time, you feel the need to embrace the promises of God. Amen. I read that a status update uh, yesterday from one of our sisters who said time should not tell you that God is not going to do it. Amen. Even if time is passing, we should not. How was that status? Can you just shout around? What? <laughs> no, don't let time mm -hmm. make you forget what God told you to do. Amen. Don't let time make you forget what God told you. He will do. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. So I believe that sometimes we might be struggling because time is going, time is moving fast. We are now almost at the end of the year and maybe you are still struggling with some circumstances in your life that have not changed despite how much you have fasted, despite how much you have prayed. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. So as we look at Habakkuk prayer today, I want us to see four faith building expressions that are going to encourage and strengthen us today praise the name of the lord i believe that we are going to finish strong but we will finish strong because we'll continue building up our faith praise the name of the lord Amen. and one statement is a statement of strength i want you if you're writing just write this is a statement of strength when our faith is being shaken by things we don't understand. You know, sometimes your faith is being shaken by things you don't understand. 
When your faith is being shaken by things you don't understand, we need to go back and remember some of those foundational things about our God that we do understand. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm going to repeat that statement or strand again. When our faith is shaken by things we do not understand, we need to go back and remember the things about our God we understand. Because I am sure there is something you understand about your God. Your faith may be shaken today by things you are not understanding, but there is something you understand about your God. And that is what we need to do. We need to go back and remember some things we understand about our God. And some of the things that we may not be able to understand is that we may not be able to understand why evil people prosper. Anybody with that answer? We may not be able to understand why evil people prosper. prosper. You find those people who are not walking in righteousness, who don't care about God, and everything about them is going smoothly. You are not the first to have asked that question. Even David had a point of asking, why are the people, people who are evil prospering? I am here keeping all the commandments. I am here walking in the ways of the Lord. Why are these not working out for me? But for those who are wicked, these are working out for them. You may never understand. We may not understand why the evil continue prospering. Praise the name of the Lord. Another thing that you may not understand is why the godly people suffer. Amen. Why do godly people suffer? You may never understand that. Praise the name of the Lord. You may not understand why the godly people suffer. Hallelujah. This year I've lost a few, we've lost a few people. And when you look back, everybody we've lost is a good person. And you wonder why did they have to die? They were good. Even when you listen to the people in the memorial when they're when they are reading the eulogy, they are good people. They are they are people you'd want them to continue living. Praise the name of the Lord. I have prayed with people who have been suffering from illnesses, chronic diseases, but they are good people. They are godly people. Why do good people suffer? suffer? That is something we may never understand. Praise the name of the Lord. We may not understand why our prayers seem to go unanswered. We have a statement here. We always say, according to Mark eleven twenty four, whatsoever you pray in my name, believe that you shall have it. And you have it, and you shall receive it. We believe that every prayer we pray that the Lord has heard, and we have received the answer. But sometimes it takes time before the manifestation of the answer. Why does it seem like our prayers are unanswered? We may not understand. Praise the name of the Lord. And so this statement of strength, when your faith is challenged by things you do not understand, go back and check on the things you understand about God. Praise the name of the Lord. So when you get to such a position, when you get to such a place, that is the time you need to quickly get back to the basics. And remember who God is. Remember what he has done for us. Remember what he has promised to us. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. When you get to that level, where you start to try to understand some of these things that cannot be understood, do not allow yourself to go down that hole. Do not allow yourself to go down that dark place. Praise the name of the Lord. Quickly and fast enough, go back to the basic and start remembering who God is in your life. Start remembering what God has done for you. Start remembering what God has promised you. Praise the name of the Lord. And that is where we find Habakkuk did not dwell on that. He started saying, oh Lord, I have heard of your fame. Praise the name of the Lord. I have heard of your 
fame. He had a heart of the deeds of God. He had a heart of stories of how God delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt. He had a heart of the miracles and the great things that God had, had done. Praise the name of the Lord. So immediately, Habakkuk did not dwell on what he could not understand. He could not figure out why they have to go to captivity. He could not figure out why Babylonians, that they were wicked, were allowed to conquer them. He could not figure out why God could not change and transform the wicked leaders of Judah. He could not figure that out. But he went immediately and started thinking. And he said, I have heard of your fame, O oh God. I have heard of your deeds, O oh God. I have heard of your power, O oh God. I have heard of your strength, O oh God. And that is why it is very important to share testimonies. Amen. Amen. When God does something for you, rise up and share a testimony. Because that testimony is going to make somebody one day stand and say, I have heard of what God can do. I have heard of your healing power. I have heard of your provision. I have heard of your deliverance. The miracles and the testimonies that God give you, they are not for you to keep. They belong to us. Amen. Tell your neighbor, your testimony is mine. Because it is a reference point for me. When I keep thinking about those things that I cannot understand, I can switch and say, I have heard of the fame of the Lord. Psalms 44, verse 1 to 3. I'm going to read very fast. Psalms 44. Psalms 44, verse 1 to 3. The Bible says, we have heard with our ears, O God. Our fathers have told us what work you did in their days, in the times of old. This is David. He said, we have heard. Amen. I don't know what you have heard, but what you have heard of God, the fame of God that you have heard, is going to take you out of a pit when you try to figure out things that you cannot understand. Instead of your faith going down, your faith is going to be ignited. Your faith is going to be increased because of what you have heard. And the Bible says that our fathers have told us, fathers who are here, mothers who are here, let us tell our children of the doings of the Lord. David is saying our fathers told us. Oh, he is saying, Jesse told me. Because Jesse had been told by Obed, praise the name of the Lord. The fathers tell their children, and the children tell their children, and the continuation of the story continues, praise the name of the Lord. And the Bible says, what works you did in their days and in the times of, day of old. How you drove out the heathen with your hand and planted them. How you did afflict the people and cast them out. For they got not the land in possession by their own sword. So listen to what their father told him. The, the, the victory they got, they did not get it by their own sword. Neither did their own arm save them. By thy right hand and your arm and the light of thy countenance because you had favor unto them. Praise the name of the Lord. So when... That when the fathers were telling the generation of David, this is how they were telling him. Yes, God gave us this land. God took us out from where we were being oppressed. And he gave us this land as a possession. They did not say, you know, we fought. We fought the Canaanites. We fought the Amalekites. We fought the Jebusites. You know what? We really fought. No. The fathers were telling it as it is. They said it is not by our sword. It is not by our arm that we did this. But this is how we got this land. Be by the right hand of God and by the arm of the Lord and by the light of his countenance. That is how we got victory. We received favor from God. You know, sometimes how we tell our testimonies take away the glory of God. We start saying about what God has done for us, but we put a lot of me, 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 and I. And we boast in the midst and take away the fame of God and the glory of God. Praise the name of the Lord. You start saying, you know, 
I, it's because I really had, had this plan and, 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 and it really worked out. I had everything in place. Have you ever had somebody give a testimony and you wonder, are they glorifying God or are they just talking about themselves? Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. But when the fathers were telling David generation, they were very sincere about it. They say by his right hand, by his arm, by the light of his countenance, by favor. That is how we got the victory. It is not because we worked so hard. You know, when we don't tell it as it is, we make other people question whether they are still doing the right thing. Praise the name of the Lord. When we share the testimonies, it is always good and it is very important to give God all the glory. So Habakkuk stood in our way at the deeds of the Lord. We need to remember all that God has done in the past. We need to remember. Tell your neighbor, remember. remember. We need to remember his deeds. We need to be awestruck. You know the way you're just amazed at the first time he does it. Amen. That first time you got that miracle. We need to go back to that moment and just be awestruck by what he did in the past. Praise the name of the Lord. We need to go back again and just say, wow, this is what God did for me. It might be 20 years ago, but wow, this is what the Lord did for me. Praise the name of the Lord. So how long has it been since you took time to ponder and meditate on the fame and the awesome deeds of God? Are we just seeing what is not working out? Or do we have moments of one of pondering? I'm, I'm saying that this is a word that really spoke to me in my life this week because I had I had I was in a place of that questions. But when the Lord started speaking to me, I started to just reflect back and ponder what the Lord has done in my life, what the Lord has done in my family's life, what the Lord has done in the creation. Amen. You look outside and see the snow. And I wrote to, I, I wrote a verse this week. And uh, out of whose womb did the snow come from? Amen. That is a question that God was asking Job. Where did the frost and snow come from? Do you even know where I store it? You just wonder and ponder about the creation of God. When I think about the things God has done in this church. Hallelujah. When was the last time you just pondered and wondered and marveled at the deeds of God? You know what that did? When Habakkuk started pondering and wondering at the deeds of God, he says... I was afraid. Oh Lord, I have heard your word. I have heard your faith. And I was afraid. He started to tremble. He was afraid because this is a mighty God. This is a God who has done great wonders. You, when you start to think about the things he has done, it makes you even want to repent for the times you are feeling sorry for yourself. It makes you want even to humble yourself and say, God, I am sorry for the times that I thought your power is, un is limited. For the times that I thought that you're not working. You may be working behind the scenes. I will trust you. Because you did it in the past. You can do it again. Praise the name of the Lord. And so the next thing that Habakkuk did, he requested revival. A request for revival. So number two, a request for revival. Habakkuk cook meditation on the fame and the awesome deeds of the Lord led him to make a heartfelt, passionate request of his, of his Lord. Do these deeds in our days. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. He felt, no, 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 I have heard. It is amazing. It is wonderful. But there is something that is being birthed within me. I have a desire that I may see those works in my days. Amen. I don't want to remain in the stories of my fathers. I don't want to remain in the testimonies of others. I need you, Lord, to revive your works in my days. I don't want to keep saying I have heard. I want to change and have a testimony and say I have seen. Praise the name of the Lord. Just like 
job one day, he wrote and said, I used to hear with my ears, but today I have seen with my eyes. Praise the name of the Lord. When you start to meditate about the wonders of God, when you start to meditate about his deeds, then there is that passionate cry. There is that desire that is born in you. You no longer focus on what is not working out. You start having a special cry within you. The Lord revive your works in our days. I want to be the one to give the testimony. I want to be the one to say, I saw with my eyes. I want to be the one to say, it is me that the Lord did for me. Praise the name of the Lord. Just like that blind man, when he was told to go and wash in Siloam, and people kept asking, are you the one or are you not the one? He was strong and brave to say, I am he that was blind, but now I can see. Praise the name of the Lord. A request for revive. Move from the level of asking questions of things that you cannot understand and get to that part where you can pray for revival. When I hear about the great doings, about how God has blessed other churches, I can pray sincerely with no jealousy that God, I thank you for what you have done in that church, but I want you to do something like that here. Praise the name of the Lord. You can pray passionately. You can say, God, I thank you for what you did for that sister. But I also desire that you do it in my life. A passionate request. A sincere desire. And we know that he has the ability to do it. He has the ability to do it. But are we willing to pay the price? Praise the name of the Lord. God has the ability to do it in our days. We can become those people who are going to share the stories now of the great deeds of the Lord. But are we willing to pay the price? Paying the price means we will have to change. Paying the price means we will have to sacrifice. Paying the price means we will have to get outside our comfort zones. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes, we want it in our days. We want revival in our days. But are we willing to pay the price? Are we willing to sacrifice more time in prayer? Just like we said last Sunday. More time in his presence. Getting deeper and deeper in his presence. Amen. And number three. From the prayer of Habakkuk. He got a glimpse of God's glory. From verse 3 to verse 15, he got a glimpse of God's glory. This is where I was telling you, try to be imaginative, creative, and try to, to imagine all these words that I'm reading. God gave Habakkuk a vision of his glory in a way that maybe we may never be able to see in our lives. And this is a, a, a way that God was appearing mostly in the Old Testament. And sometimes it was accompanied by uphills in nature, fire, wind, flood, earthquakes. So you can see that Habakkuk got a glimpse of God's glory. As he is describing that there was coals on his feet. His spear was glittering. Huh? Can you remember everything we read? Yeah. He got a glimpse of his glory. And I want to say that even though we might not have such an experience like Habakkuk, we can still use this experience to gain a glimpse of God's glory. And know that the same God who did these things is the same God that we serve today. Praise the name of the Lord. He's a God who came in splendor, verse 3 to 5. He is a God who stood in power, verse 6 and 7. He is a God who marched in victory, verse 8 to 15. And I'm going to repeat that again. He is a God who came in splendor, splendor, beauty. And number two, he's a God who stood in power. 
And that is why Habakkuk is asking, why, 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 you, why are you angry with the rivers? Why are you angry with the waters when you rode upon the waters with your chariots? Because he, he stood in power as he crushed his enemies. And number three, he marched in victory. Victory because everywhere he stranded, there was victory. Praise the name of the Lord. And finally, a foundation of faith, verse 16 to 19. And this is one of the most profound statements in the book of Habakkuk, and not only in the book of Habakkuk, but in the whole Bible. Habakkuk is faced by the prospect that the nation is about to be invaded by a terrible enemy. He knows, he's a prophet. He knows that that is about to happen. Jeremiah had already prophesied. He also knows that many people will be killed. And many more will be taken into exile. He already knows that. Praise the name of the Lord. He also knows that the land will be ruined. He knows that Jerusalem and the temple will be destroyed. He knows that. Yet he says this. He will trust God no matter what. Praise the name of the Lord. He will trust God no matter what. And verse 18 says, the Lord is my strength. I mean, verse, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. And he goes to describe and says, even if there will be no harvest, even if the vines will not produce, even if there will be no cattle in the stalls, even if there will be nothing, hallelujah, can we get to such a level where our faith is not dictated by external signs, where our foundation of faith is not in what we can receive or what we see. Praise the name of the Lord. He said the fig tree may not blossom, the vine may not be fruitful, the labor of the olive may fail. The fields shall eat no milk. The flock shall be cut off. Total desolation. But even if that is what is going to happen, yet I will trust in the Lord. I will rejoice in the Lord my God. Praise the name of the Lord. Can we get to that level where we can't rely on the outward indicators for our faith? I'm going to ask you that question again. Can we get to that level where we are not going to rely on the outward indicators for our faith? That you're so much alive and you worship so much because things are already done. Even when things are not okay. You can say like Habakkuk, and yet I will rejoice in the Lord my God. Habakkuk could not rejoice in his circumstances. But he could rejoice in his God. Praise the name of the Lord. He could not rejoice when he knew that ruin was coming. Jerusalem would be destroyed. The temple would be laid bare. He could not rejoice in what was about to happen. But he knew that he could rejoice in his God. I pray today that each and every one of us is going to get to that level where we are not going to access joy and our faith will not be activated by the external indicators. But we are going to rejoice in our God because he is our Lord. Amen. He is our salvation in whom we can be joyful no matter what our outward circumstances are. He is our strength. He enables us to get out of the valley and unto greater heights in him. Praise the name of the Lord. I told you to mark that part that says he will make me walk upon my high places. And I've come to tell you there are your high places. There are places that are high and they're yours. There are levels that you've not gotten to, but they are yours. Praise the name of the Lord. The challenges that you're facing right now do not say or do not deny you the opportunity to ride on your high places. But on those high places, it is the Lord who enables you to get out of the valley. If you're walking in a dark valley right now, he is the one who takes you out of that valley and 
takes you on to greater heights with him. Praise the name of the Lord. I pray today that each and every one of us who get to that level, the level that Habakkuk was, he was saying in the leaf, the fig trees do not blossom. Even if they are not kept on in the storm, even if everything else is destroyed, yet I will rejoice in my God. I will rejoice in my God. I want you to stand on your feet as I come to a conclusion. Yesterday I was reading a story and uh, I read a story about somebody who came from down south in Texas. And he went a church, to a church, <laughs> a cathedral in New England, <laughs> here. <laughs> and he was amazed at how quiet and reserved everyone was. And all of a sudden, he heard the minister say something he really liked. And he let out a good, strong, Amen! And everybody turned and looked at him and the usher rushed to his side and asked him, are you okay? I said, sir, you must not talk out loud. And he said, but I've got a region. And the usher was, well, you certainly did not get it from here. <laughs> because everybody else is, is quiet. And the reason I'm sharing this story is that when your focus is on God and not in your circumstances, you will still be able to worship. Amen? You will still be able to respond to God's touch upon your heart. Amen. Hallelujah. You will still be able to say amen. Even when the external signs are saying, be quiet. There's nothing to shout about. We always have something to shout about because we have a mighty God. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. And so I want you to, to know that we will always have those moments when our faith has been shaken, when we have questions that seems to go unanswered. But Habakkuk today teaches us that even when everything points toward giving up on God, that is when we need to focus on him the more. Praise the name of the Lord. Just lift up your hands before the Lord. I want to pray for you today. As I also pray for those who are watching us online that even if everything seems to be saying otherwise everything says give up on God. It is time to focus on him more because he is our strength. He comes in with splendor. He stands in power. He marches in victory. Right now in the mighty name of Jesus. How we pray King of all glory. That each and every one of us is going to rejoice in you Lord. Not in the circumstances that are surrounding us in the name of Jesus. Not in the unanswered questions to your father. I pray that each and every one of us oh God, will have a deep cry and deep desire Lord. To see your doings. To see your deeds. To see your manifestation in our times oh God. Yes we have heard with our ears oh God but I pray in the name of Jesus even as we come near to the close of the year that this time that is remaining we are going to see with our eyes and confess that we used to hear with our ears but now we have seen with our eyes the power belongs to you oh God. All glory belongs to you Jehovah. I pray for that sister, that brother who was discouraged. I declare an encouragement right now and from today I declare that their focus is changing they are not going to focus on the outwards oh Lord, they are not going to focus on the circumstances oh God but their faith foundation is going to be in you and knowing you oh God, we thank you and we honor you, in Jesus name we pray amen, amen. and everybody say amen, let's give the Lord a shout of praise Hallelujah, hallelujah. Give the Lord a shout of praise. I wish two or three people tell them, I will rejoice in the Lord of my salvation. Amen. Great small people tell them, I rejoice in the Lord of my salvation. I'm not going to rejoice in the circumstances. I will rejoice in the Lord of my salvation. Amen. Even if the fig trees are not bearing, 
even if the stalls have no cattle. It's not about what I see, it's about the God I know. The God I understand. I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. Amen. And may God bless you. Amen. Let's give the Lord a shout of praise again.